So tonight we are going to take you through a quick tour of what the registration process will look like. Some things to keep on your radar as you enter into your senior year. We'll talk about some new course offerings we plan to offer next school year and some things that you should be thinking about as you plan for life beyond the horizon. We have an informative and interactive presentation planned for you with lots of information. So please make yourself comfortable, grab a snack, get your questions ready. We will take questions throughout the presentation. You can use either the chat or the Q&A and also at the end of the presentation. So we welcome you to type your questions in. We will try to keep up with them and answer as many as we can throughout the presentation this evening. Also note that our presentation is being recorded and it will be posted onto our YouTube channel this evening. So if you're not able to stay for the entirety of the event, you can catch the recorded presentation online on our Horizon High School YouTube channel. Please note that if you enter any questions or you type into the chat, that that does um, become, particularly with the Q&A, have your name attached so it becomes uh, public information. So I just wanted to make sure that you are all aware of that. We have about 75 parents and students joining us this evening, so we are very excited for your turnout tonight. The first thing we have to keep focused on are those graduation requirements. That's the first thing we're going to talk about tonight. We're going to discuss the minimum requirements for graduation per the state of Florida. You may or may not know, but we do not determine what graduation requirements are. The state actually tells us those courses and requirements that are required at a minimum in order to issue a high school diploma. So we're going to discuss that relative to your course selection and planning beyond high school. We will briefly discuss things to think about depending on the direction you want to take after high school, including possible advanced coursework opportunities, bright futures, what that is, as well as the registration process. So in the poll feature, in just a second, I'm going to open up a poll question, and I'm going to provide a list of graduation requirements. What I would like you to do is in that poll, go ahead and click which of the, those listed are not a graduation requirement, and there could be one or there could be more than one correct response. So in the poll, go ahead and tell us which of those are not graduation requirements. Again, you can check more than one answer. And you have about 15 seconds remaining to get your responses in. I'm going to give you guys a few more seconds because we do have quite a few who haven't yet submitted a response. So I'm going to give you guys another minute, another few seconds. All right, so we had a range of answers. A few of you said that a minimum GPA is not required. And we are going to uh, explain what that minimum requirement is because there is a required GPA. 19 of you selected that two years of a world language is not required. You are correct. And 50 of you out of 83 participants identified that 100 hours of community service is not actually a graduation requirement. And you are correct for those of you who responded. Here on the screen, you'll see a list of the required graduation requirements established by the state of Florida that each student must meet in order to qualify for a high school diploma. As I said before, these requirements are established by the state. We do not have leeway to waive or remove any of these requirements, except for those that the state allows us to. For example, under certain circumstances or through other requirements, hope can be waived. The minimum requirements for credits are shown on the screen. So you'll notice that there's a minimum of four English, four math, three science, three social studies, a hope class, a performing and fine art, as well as eight additional electives. You'll notice that although eight electives are required, if you earn beyond the minimum requirements for a core class, that can be applied as one of your eight elective credits. So for example, let's suppose that you take four science classes. Three of those credits can be applied towards your required three science classes, 
and one can be used towards the eight elective credits. In addition to the credit requirements, the state requires a minimum 2.0 unweighted GPA and a passing score on the Algebra 1 EOC and the FSA ELA or earning concordance scores, which are shown here in the chart on those respective tests. On our website, you can go to student services, graduation requirements for more detailed information, including how to earn the scholars, merit or biliteracy seal, which is in addition to your diploma, how to satisfy the HOPE credit through other means than HOPE, and options for your online courses. If you prefer using Canvas, you can go to your student body Canvas page, students, and under student services, you can access this information as well. So the next question we're gonna ask you in our poll is what are your plans after graduation? Remember that your poll responses are anonymous, so other participants will not be able to see your name attached to the question. So go ahead and tell us, what do you plan to do as of today what do you plan to do after you graduate high school? We have about 15 seconds left to respond. All right, thank you very much. And so out of our 95 attendees, we had 77 responses and 54. So more than half of you have stated that you would like to go to a four year university. Three of you would like to go to a two year college and three of you would like to go to a career technical school. We did not have anyone respond that they want to go directly into employment or the military. We did have one other. So I think that's an interesting response there. So now I'm going to pass it over to uh, Ms. Renfro, who is going to talk about future opportunities and options. Sorry, I forgot to unmute. Now let's look to the future. It's important to think about um, what opportunities your students are wanting to set themselves up for and what course selection um, for their senior year um, in high school. So how those are going to impact what they're picking for this next year. We want um, them thinking about um, how our different resources like the College and Career Center and applications like Common App, SCORE, and where can help them prepare for the future. So at this point, um, students may or may not have a clear picture of what you want to do after high school. Um, you have a wide variety um, and range of opportunities that await them. Well, you do not necessarily need to know right this minute exactly what you want to do after high school. It is important that by this point, you have a solid idea of what direction you want to head towards. Um, you should be already um, taking classes that will prepare you to enter employment, tech college, the military, or continue on with school. We have some students that have already begun their tech school while still in high school and can still apply for that for their senior year. Um, applications for colleges open up in um, summer and early August, so that's coming sooner than you know. Um, and others are preparing for the ASVAB testing and already in our NBCC um, program um, to prepare for military opportunities. Our intention throughout this registration process is to guide um, you and your students to make the choices um, now that are going to open up the right doors um, down the road based on a projected flight plan. I'm going to slide off. Um, one of the most common questions we get in student services should be, um, or is, should my students take AP, ACE, or dual enrollment courses? The answer to that question is not black or white. Each of these options provides rigorous learning opportunities that are um, actually quite comparable to each other. The curriculum in all three of these options is college level, weighted on a six points um, scale in their weighted GPA and academically rigorous. The differences between the programs and the idea of choosing the best program is somewhat misleading. 
My suggestion is that you research the schools that your students are planning to attend or apply to um, to determine their policies and preferences and also generally recommend um, that along the lines of developing a rounded student taking one or more courses from each of these programs is generally a wise route to take. Um, additionally, please know that it is not necessarily to take excessive amounts of these courses in order to be an appealing candidate to universities. When looking at analysis of freshmen admitted to the Florida State Universities in 2018 academic year, freshmen had an increasingly higher chance of getting accepted as they took more than these um, more of these level of classes until they got to five um, for their high school career. These uh, statistics show that taking 15 versus five of these courses did not significantly improve their chance of acceptance into school. Specifically, FSU, in this case, taking five or six classes versus one to two does increase your chances of acceptance, but taking five to six versus nine to 10 does not cause much of a significant um, difference. It is important to note that when it comes to college admissions, universities are increasingly looking to admit well-rounded students who demonstrate a work, school, home, life balance um, by participating in multiple areas. Um, so that's why we wanna make sure they don't overload with their academics and lose some of the other areas. Um, also know that ACE not only prepares students to get into a university, but it also provides them with skills required to be successful once there. A study done by the Director of Admissions found that ACE program graduates attending the University of Florida had an average end of freshman year GPA, so college GPA, of 3.46, whereas students coming from other accelerated mechanisms such as AP, um, Advanced Placement, or International Baccalaureate, the IB program, had an average GPA of 3.12 or and 3.10, respectively. We highlight this information not to emphasize that ACE, AP, or, or dual enrollment are better options than each other, but to emphasize the opportunities and benefits within each program. Dual enrollment is another amazing opportunity available at Horizon. OCPS offers four opportunities for dual enrollment through Orange Technical College, Valencia College, University of Central Florida, and University of Florida. Each of these programs have different benefits and requirements for entry. The dual enrollment program enables qualified students an opportunity to participate in an academic accelerated acceleration program. It allows students to pursue an advanced curriculum that earns the students both high school and college credit simultaneously for free. Planning ahead is necessary when interested in dual enrollment due to application deadlines following, following the year or semester prior to enrollment, most of which will open in February, this February, for next fall of 2022. So those applications are about to start for the spring, or for fall coming up. If college is a likely route, um, and it sounds like from our polling, a lot of students are going that direction, um, I highly encourage you to review the requirements for the Bright Future Scholarship. The Bright Future Scholarship is a scholarship available to all Florida residents based on completion of specific requirements. Please familiarize yourself with the testing, GPA, and course requirements, as this opportunity is a wonderful chance to attend college with the majority um, if not all of your tuition and fees covered. Additionally, note that if you complete the Cambridge Diploma and 100 hours of community service, that you will automatically qualify for the highest level of Bright Future Scholarship, regardless of test scores or GPA. This is a huge opportunity that I encourage you to really think about and discuss with your parents. Beginning in the fall 2021 sem semester, Bright Futures Florida Medallion Scholarship, um, students enrolled in an associate degree program at a Florida State College, so a two-year program. Um, normally, the medallion scholarship is 75%, but at a two-year university, they will receive 100% of tuition and specific fees. Upon completion of their associate degree, their two-year degree, a student can then use his or her award to pursue a baccalaureate degree, their four year degree, and receive the 75% of tuition for the those next two years. 
This is an incentive for students who might otherwise go directly to a four year university with 75% scholarship to have that 100% of their tuition covered for the um, by first routing through the two year school. Thank you, Ms. Renfro. For many students, as we saw in our poll, or the results of our poll, going directly to a four year university is a direct aim and objective for various reasons. For some, the goal of getting directly into a four year university presents an accomplishment that they set out to achieve with sights on early. For others, the idea of attending a big name school is an allure that gets them excited. And for some students, the idea of leaving home to a faraway school is exciting. Still yet, other students appreciate the extra time or benefit of saved expenses by attending a two year local college prior to university. I think it's worth mentioning here that attending a two year college should not be looked at as a step backwards, downwards, or otherwise negatively. Some students will quickly dismiss this option and keep their sights solely on directly attending the, a university. And I think it's important to mention that in terms of the end goal, which for all students pursuing a four year university degree is a bachelor's, at least in the immediate sense of it, or even if it's beyond, the two year college is a great option. I share this because I have seen many students, just last week I spoke prior to break, I spoke to a student who was putting an extreme amount of pressure on himself to get accepted into a specific four year school. And the reality of the situation today is that it is extremely competitive and expensive, even if you are admitted, to attend a four-year university directly. So while I do not want to discourage any students from applying or seeking admission into a four-year school, I think that it is wise to leave the door open to the possibility of attending a two-year school prior to going to a four-year university. I think that it's a great option that shouldn't be dismissed too quickly and I think that today we see a lot of young students, young people putting a lot of pressure on themselves that sometimes can be very negative for them um, to get into a four year school. So I think that leaving this door open can alleviate some of that anxiety that students sometimes uh, put on themselves. Additionally, as Ms. Rumpro just stated, if a student earns the 75% Bright Future Scholarship and they attend a four to two year community college, the state will pay for 100% of their tuition while they attend the two year college. So I think that that's a pretty cool bonus. To put the competition with admissions into perspective um, from the 2021 fall of the 2021 year, this past year at the University of Florida, there were 52,513 freshman applicants to the University of Florida this past year. Of those 52,000 applicants, 14,561 were admitted. That represents just over 27% of the applicants to the University of Florida were admitted. And the numbers are comparable in the other state university uh, schools. So here, what I have on the screen now is the 2020 abridged Florida State University System or SUS matrix. This table shows the average GPA SAT and ACT scores, as well as application deadlines for each university in the state of Florida. Notice that the GPAs are quite high and they are weighted GPAs. You know that they're weighted because they go above a 4.0. So right off the bat, that tells you that they are weighted. And also notice that the GPAs shown here are not the same GPA that you will see on your transcript or in Skyward when you look at your weighted GPA. The GPA shown here is a recalculated GPA that the university calculates when you provide your transcripts during the application process. Every university will recalculate your GPA based on their own standard so that the GPA calculation is consistent for all of the applicants. Normally, when you apply to a state university, the GPA that they are going to calculate is going to exclude your elective classes. So that's something that you want to keep in mind. Your elective classes may be boosting your GPA. They may not. Sometimes even if you have A's in elective classes, they can, they can uh, cause your GPA to actually be lower. So in some cases it's a benefit, but in some cases your GPA may not be exactly what you think it is based on how the university calculates it. So it's important that you use this matrix as a guide 
to compare what your GPA and your test scores are along with the average scores of admitted students. Also, it's important to keep in mind that students are admitted every day and every year with GPAs and test scores outside of the ranges shown. So it, these ranges do not mean that you have to have the GPA or the score shown in order to be accepted. However, knowing the average score is a good way to gauge where you stand compared to other applicants from years past. Let's now pull the focus back to graduation. In selecting your classes, um, you are looking towards the future, but also focusing on what is important in the here and now, getting to graduation. The course selection process is opening up this week through a Google form like last year. Rising seniors especially need to make sure they are getting all their requirements scheduled in. If they haven't completed HOPE yet, schedule it. If they still need a performing or fine art, schedule it. What about world language? It's not needed for graduation, um, but if you're already completed the first year, it might be wise to complete the second year of that language for college and scholarship opportunities. World language is a great point to speak to. Um, because although it's not required for graduation, if you are one of those students that's trying to go directly into a four year school, um, chances are, if you don't have 2 years of the same language at any level, so it could be level 1 and 2, or if you skip to level 3 and 4, then uh, that would be fine as well. Chances are that if you don't have that, you will probably not be accepted into university. Again, that's not a hard requirement, but it is a common soft requirement that we see if students are not taking those two years, it's going to be difficult to get accepted directly into a four year school. And also if, if they go to a two year college like Valencia, if they don't already have their two years of language, they'll have to do it as part of their two year program before they can move on and, and complete their two years of college. And it's a requirement for bright futures and other things. That's why I said the scholarship. So we're also excited to be announcing some of the new course offerings coming to Horizon, including law studies, personal finance, hospitality, hospitality and tourism, African American and women's studies, theater, um, cinema and film analysis, musical theater or musical theory, sorry, um, horticulture, wrestling, AP art, three D, AP art history, painting, creative writing. Holocaust and Sociology, Ace Psychology 2, and AP Computer Science A. We'll assist students uh, assess student interest in these courses based on the number of students who sign up for each course. And if given enough students for each class, for any class, we will offer the courses listed here. To find out more information about our course offerings, including new and previous offering offered courses, please visit the electives and program slide presentation link available on our website. On the polling option, type in if any of the new classes we plan to offer interest you. We have about 13 seconds left to get those responses in. I see quite a few in progress. So we just want to know which of these classes, if any, interests you, would you be excited in taking? All right. We have a variety, so students interested all over the place. It looks like personal finance takes the cake though. So we have quite a few interested in personal finance. Very cool. So to access our presentation of electives, as Ms. Renfro said, we have a presentation on our website that has a slide for every elective and course that we'll offer next year. You're gonna go to horizonhs.ocps.net, which is our website. You'll click on academics at the top and then electives. And from there, you will see a link that's called the descriptions of elective courses slash programs. This is a live document, which means that as any edits are made, you can access those edits from this link, but it is current and up to date for you to be able to view those courses that we are going to offer next year. 
this is what that presentation will look like on the first slide. And you'll be able to peruse through that and check it out. We have um, about 80 slides on there of programs and courses that we're offering. So take your time, go through that. The slides provide pictures and information, as well as, in some cases, teachers contact info if you'd like to reach out to them to ask any questions about a course. So thank you to everyone who answered that question for us. So we have many steps kind of in our registration process. So starting tomorrow, the students will um, have a presentation um, that they'll be able to go through um, to kind of review the process and things like that. Um, and links will be available for them to explore the new and existing um, electives like we just talked about um, for the students to help choose from. Students and parents should look through uh, the GradRex tab in Skyward to see which classes um, are still required for your student to get to graduation next year. So that's really key, making sure we're not missing anything and looking through, making sure everything's on there properly. Um, if you or your student have any questions about the courses, like Ms. Uh, Kanaya was just saying, um, it's good to reach out to those teachers or even um, other students that you think have taken those classes to explore what um, some of these different classes um, are all about. On Thursday, January 6th, the Google form will open up so students and parents together can begin making selections for science classes and electives, um, and it'll close on January 12th. Um, this year, we are selecting the core classes for students based on data like grades, test scores, and teacher recommendations. Um, students will be getting an email in their OCPS Gmail with their um, core class selections for English, math, and history that were selected for them on January 13th. Um, then they will be able to discuss any changes they would like to make during their one-on-one -on -one meeting with the counselors that will be occurring during their science classes. So to go into a little bit more depth with the registration, the course registration timeline, the first step is um, actually today, we're, we're, we're ahead on step three here for you 12th graders, rising 12th graders. You are attending our parent and student registration parent night. So you have already completed step three. Step one will actually uh, be tomorrow. We will have a select schedule, which means that in the morning between first and second period, we'll have a 30 minute block of time in which in your first period class, you will review a presentation about the registration process. It will be different than this presentation. It's a Nearpod, an interactive Nearpod that you'll go through and um, click through and listen to the presentation completed by your counselors about the registration process and the details of it. You will be able to access this presentation through your student body canvas and your first period teacher will also provide the link for you. After reviewing, I clicked on a link here, give me one second. After reviewing the one moment. My slides is taking me to link here. One moment. Okay. So after reviewing the presentation in your class tomorrow, you will review the electives and program slides uh, presentation that we shared with you. You will automatically be taken there. That's where it actually links me to right now after your Nearpod is completed. As I said, we've already done step three. Step four is that you will review the registration form and complete it along with your parents between the 6th, which is Thursday, and January 12th. So the link will be provided to you via your email and also on our student body canvas page at 7 p.m. on this Thursday. At that time, with sometime within the following week, we ask you to reserve about 30 minutes with your parents to complete that form together. In that form, you're going to select your classes, your elective classes for next year. Note that you will choose your elective classes and you will choose your science class. Your math, English, and social studies class will be chosen for you by um, based on your teacher's recommendation, the class, the, the class that you're currently placed in, 
as well as your grades and previous data will be taken into consideration to identify that those three core classes for you. Don't worry, you will have an opportunity to provide input. You will have an opportunity to change or adjust that core class recommendation, but we will make a rec recommendation for your English, math, and social studies class based on your current class grades, data, and teacher input. And then on the 13th, you'll receive an email from me on your recommended core classes, as well as it will list the elective courses in the science class that you selected. You'll be provided that email on the 13th for you to look over and review prior to your meeting with your counselor. And then between January 13th and February 24th, you will meet with your guidance counselor who will come to your science class and meet with you right outside of your science class to, to review your course selection, both your elective and your core classes, as well as to make any edits and adjustments at that time during that meeting. So as I said, we'll choose the core class, but when you come to sit down with your counselor on that day or when they come to sit down with you in your science class, you'll be able to adjust any of the classes that were selected. And then step seven is that in early March, after our counselors have met with all of our students, we will send an email to your OCPS student email with your tentative course request, including any adjustments that were made to your core or elective choices. Now, when I'm referencing that you'll receive an email, keep in mind that all email we send is going to the student's OCPS email. That's your, your Google email. So it's important that you're checking that daily and that you're monitoring your OCPS email because that is our primary method of communication with you. Now, we will visit you, as I said, through your science classes. And so we have a schedule that we will be coming to your science class to meet with you. And so you can see that here on the screen, find your science teacher, and then you'll know that you're gonna meet with your counselor on one of those two days that are assigned to your science teacher. If you are a dual enrollment student or you do not have a science class on campus, your counselor will contact you sometime in the month of January or February to schedule your meeting with you. So don't worry, we have a system for keeping track of all of the students that we meet with. And if we don't get you through a science class, we will contact you for that meeting. The registration form looks like this, at least the first page of it. So this is what it will look like. It is, as I said, a bit long. It will take you about 30 minutes to complete that. And we ask that you complete it along with your parent. Please read all of the notes and information that is provided here. I know sometimes students will skip over that, but we do provide important information. And it's important that you take the time to read through it. Throughout the form, you will find notes uh, that are important for you to read. And we also include on the very top of it, the links to our curriculum guide, which is linked on our website, as well as that elective presentation that we discussed earlier. So that is all the information that we have to share with you today. And if you have any questions, we would be glad to take your questions at this time. Please feel free to um, enter them into either the chat or the Q&A, and we will be happy to answer those questions. Are we able to share the slides with parents? The, this presentation is being recorded and it will be posted to our YouTube channel so you can follow the slides along through our YouTube channel. And uh, Christina asks if it's possible to sign up for the PERT test. I don't recall the deadline, but what you can do, Christina, is reach out to Ms. Ambrose. She is our college and career specialist and she'll be able to answer that question for you. And I will go ahead and type her email into the chat for you to reach out to her directly. All right, if I am planning on doing two methods of dual enrollment at once, specifically Valencia and Orange Technical College, what is the minimum, the minimum amount of periods I have to be on campus to be able to do this? If you're a Valencia student and an OTC student full-time, then technically you wouldn't have to be on our campus for any periods, except that all OTC students have to take Orange County transportation. So you would have to come here to catch the bus to go to the Orange Technical Campus. 
So you wouldn't actually have to have any periods on campus, assuming that you're full time between Valencia and OT. And Ms. Renfro did um, suggest that you speak with Ms. Zola. I would recommend that as well. Uh, as a reminder, we are open every day during lunch for students to come in and talk to their counselors. For those days that we're facilitating registration, we won't actually be in guidance because we'll be meeting with our students. Um, so we do have some dates that we're not going to be in the office during lunchtime. But aside from those dates, you can come down to guidance any day during your lunch period and meet with your counselor without an appointment. If a student is not coming to school due to COVID, we'll miss the presentation tomorrow. Um, the presentation is virtual, the same as tonight's, or if you're referring to the, the presentation during the flex time, you will be able to access that through your student body canvas. The presentation will be posted there. It's in Nearpod, so you can access it and open it there. And we will have this presentation posted this evening on our YouTube channel. And we are being asked if the hospitality course is a level one or two. Next year, we will offer both level one as well as level two hospitality. So if you have already taken level one, you just have to sign up for hospitality. That's a, an excellent point to highlight is that on our course request form, we did not list levels. So what that means is that if you are in any pathway or course that progresses, for example, let's say you've taken drawing one this year and you wanna to go to drawing two next year, or you've taken hospitality one already and you wanna to go to hospitality two, or you've taken Spanish three and you wanna to go to Spanish four. You do not have to sign up for the specific level. You just sign up for the course that you're interested in, the content. So you would just sign up for hospitality and we will place you in the appropriate level based on what you've taken so far. Um, Christina, for any student who's not at school to participate in that presentation, they can access it on their student body Canvas page directly in Canvas. Um, and I'm being asked if students are given a full schedule until they know they have been accepted into dual enrollment. And that's a case by case, Melissa. Um, it's really going to depend on the student's GPA and where they stand in terms of the application requirements. So what we do is we look at um, the students that are applying to dual enrollment, we look at where they stand in terms of their requirements. And if they meet all of the dual enrollment requirements, we won't necessarily give them a full schedule, but if they're sitting on the border, we are gonna give them a Horizon High School schedule. And then once they're accepted into the program, we will adjust their request at that time. And Maria asked if students can do Valencia and Orange Technical College, and yes, you can. You can do both programs at the same time, or you could do Valencia and UF, or Orange Technical and UF, or any combination. We have students that do that all the time. Um, Jan Janice asks if students are automatically registered for the SAT on the school test date on March, and yes, they are. Students are automatically scheduled for the school test day in March. And I have another question asking if it's better to take UF dual enrollment versus Valencia. And that is not, Nyla, going to be a black and white type of answer. Um, we, it's going to depend on what you want to take. I can tell you that the UF classes are known to be quite difficult, um, but I can't tell you that one's better than the other. They have different requirements um, for admission and to be able to take them. I believe UF only allows students to take six credit hours. Ms. Renfro, you can correct me if I'm wrong on that, but I think that they have a, a lower threshold on what they allow. So often students who take dual, UF dual enrollment also take Valencia dual enrollment classes. So you don't have to do one or the other. Um, and I so had a question. UF is only online, so you have to make sure that's a good that's uh, true. option for you too, because you want to make sure you're successful in your college classes because you're starting your college GPA. So that's a big part of it too. That's a great point. All of the UF classes are online. These days, the Valencia classes tend to be online, but normally students are able to go to Valencia to take their classes. And we do not have a bus that takes students to Valencia, Dahlia. That was a question that was asked. Um, we have a bus that takes students to Orange Technical College, but to Valencia, students are required to provide their own transportation. Unless, of course, they're taking an online course, in which case 
um, they would have a period at home and they would be able to take that course online at home. Um, Caleb is asking if AP or ACE chemistry will be offered. Caleb, we will offer ACE chemistry next year. We do not plan to offer AP chemistry or biology. We will continue with ACE chemistry as well as ACE biology. Um, and Janice asks if we can review how to submit community service hours. On our website, Janice, if you go to student services, there's a tab that says community service and there's a link there for students to submit their community service proposal as well as their completed hours electronically. So everything regarding community service is handled digitally and you can access all of those links on our website under student services and you'll find a community service tab. A question is being asked about the requirements to do UF dual enrollment. And I am going to go back to that slide and put it on the screen for you because I believe we had the requirements posted here. Yes, we do. So also for you, have us, us, um, yes. on our website as well to all of the dual enrollment pages. Um, and so that's also a great way to go under the Horizon website on the academics tab. They can go to dual enrollment and there's a link to each of their pages um, to help you um, look through the requirements as well. Thank you. Yes, so you can each of these schools has a, a dual enrollment specific website. So you can just Google UF dual enrollment and get directly to their page, which has lots of information. But we've posted the requirements here. Um, it requires they require a 3.6 unweighted GPA. And remember, they will calculate their GPA for you based on their criteria. And they have a requirement of a PSAT of 1100 or SAT of 1130. And UF is only available for juniors and seniors, uh, which, which you all, um, I'm assuming here tonight, are going to be seniors next year. And um, we had a question asked if our school is providing any SAT prep tutoring sessions between now and March. Um, Ms. Dr. Hammonds, would you mind speaking to, to that? I know that we have um, a specific uh, course for um, students that had been invited to participate in a couple of sessions. It's not a full on um, prep course, but there are a select group of students who have been uh, identified and invited. But no, we don't have a blanket SAT prep course. But what I can tell you is that we do encourage students to utilize Khan Academy. And there is um, significant research through the College Board in which they are able to show a strong correlation between students' time on Khan Academy. I believe it's 20 hours, but I, I don't want to be quoted on that. Um, that shows a 100 point gain on the SAT. So if it's not exactly that, it's pretty close. So I strongly encourage our students to take advantage of using Khan practice as SAT prep. And all of our students have access to Khan. So through their launch pad, they can find the Khan Academy and access um, that practice that way. Dr. Hammonds, is there anything else that I missed in regards to that? Uh, no, I believe you covered everything um, in regards to that. Um, so we do have some SAT prep, but it is specifically for a um, uh, targeted group of students. Those parents will be receiving communication in regards to that um, in the next several days. Thank you. And we had another question about community service that I got my community service hour proposal verified before break, but never submitted them to be put into Skyward. Is it too late? I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Nyla, but you can, it, it's not too late whether you've done them or you're still um, you still have the proposal, you can go ahead and access that link and submit it there online. And I don't think it should be a problem. Is there, is there any place where I can find information about getting into universities outside of Florida, let's say New York or Boston, something that informs minimum GPAs? That's a great question, Anna. And we have a program through Students Launchpad that is called SCORE, and that's S. C O I R. All of our students have been shown how to access SCORE, which is a great resource for them to utilize to research any school 
in the United States for the most part. You can find lots of information. You can do it in, in a, um, an interest, career interest inventory. You can type in uh, any criteria that you want to look for related to school. You can search um, which school has a renowned basketball team and they will pull up schools that match that criteria for you or which school has um, a strong hospitality uh, program and they'll pull up schools within the United States that meet those parameters. So yes, use SCORE, S-C-O-I-R, through your launch pad to search for any criteria and get information about schools throughout the United States. And Ryan is asking about the coding of band as honors for students since ninth grade. Um, I don't think that I can answer that question uh, here, Ryan, but we do have a progression that we follow. Just depends on the level that they're in. So I can't say that band can be changed to honors for uh, for the purpose of GPA. We don't we don't change course codes for those reasons. It is strictly based on placement level. At my last school, I did some community service, but they were never registered in my Skyward. Is there any possibility to recover them? I would reach out to your previous school, uh, Kine, um, or speak to your counselor directly so that we can discuss that specific situation with you. And which, where can I find a list of organizations for my students to volunteer? You can find um, one list on our website. We have provided several um, options there, but I will tell you that it is difficult to get into some of these organizations, just in speaking frankly to you these days with COVID, a lot of organizations have pulled back on the students that, or the amount of students or volunteers that they're accepting. So while we do have some options provided there for you to look into, we can't guarantee that they have any availability and you can certainly look beyond those options. So really with volunteering, when it comes to community service, that's really something that we encourage students to research and find something that they can do that's of interest to them. We try to provide some options, but we are not ourselves reaching out to organizations to find them for our students. That's really something that our students are, are going to need to do. Is there any site to know what colleges will be test optional or test blind for the class of 2023? There's not a specific site that I know of. I don't know if Ms. Renfro, you know of a specific site, but if there's a specific school that you're interested or curious about, you can just Google that school to find out if they will be test optional for the class of 2023. Yeah, I, I think reaching out to the direct school that you're looking at applying to would probably be your best bet because some of that stuff has changed from year to year and, and so many things with that. So. I think that's going to be one of your biggest um, ways to, to really figure out for the places you're applying. Um, and Ms. Kanaya, did you see the one from Angie about, is there a parent senior group? Is there a parent, say that again? It's, it says, is there going to be a parent senior group? Um, some ways for parents to communicate, celebrate, like banners, parking spots, prom, like ways for them, I guess, to help be a part of some of that or setting up things? Normally, our PTSO will um, will start a senior group um, as we get closer to our senior year. And so, yes, you can expect that through our PTSO, we will have a senior group there. And so keep that in mind. If you'd like to volunteer to be a part of that uh, group, we will definitely be looking for parents to participate in that. Um, but we would just ask that you get involved through our PTSO. Thank you, Ms. Renfro. Can we retake the part? Yes, you can retake the part. Um, it can be taken, I believe, once per month. We will offer it two or three times on our campus, but students can additionally take it at Valencia. They can go there themselves and take the part. And so, yes, you are able to retake it. And typically, Valencia will extend the test requirement deadline later than the actual application. So the application deadline usually closes on March 1st, usually opens February 1st and closes March 1st for the, the fall term of the next year. So that would mean fall of 2022. Um, but normally they'll allow students to continue to earn test scores, usually through April or May, after the, the application deadline has closed. Um, I do wanna note to be careful if you go take your PERT over at Valencia, because um, they are limited 
to only allowing you to take the PERT three times in a two year span. So just make sure you're taking your um, test chances seriously if you're going over there um, so you don't use them all up and then get stuck. Do we have any questions about the registration process at this time? Completing the registration form or how you will do that? I think we we tried to capture all of the questions here. I do see one. Are the students required to take a science course next year if all science require, requirements are already met? And the answer to that, Jacqueline, would be yes. Um, barring very specific extenuating circumstances, students are required to continue with all of their core classes through graduation. And I think that's sometimes a misconception that our students have because many of our students get ahead especially in their math and science credits. Some of our students come to us with two math and two science classes already completed. So imagine if they were to stop taking those, that science class after ninth grade year or that math class after 10th grade year, they wouldn't advance. The, the point really of getting ahead in middle school or um, even of just taking those science classes in years one, two, and three is to be able to continue to advance to more rigorous coursework. And I can tell you that one of the strongest um, feedback that we get from admissions officers for students who are otherwise very high achieving, have high GPAs and high um, performance in their classes is that they do not continue taking core classes through their senior year. That's a huge misconception that I have seen over the years many students have is that it's my senior year, I've met my graduation requirements, I don't need to take a math class or I don't need to take a science class. I can just kind of cruise. And that is detrimental if you are planning to go to a university specifically. So I strongly encourage you not to do that. Even if you're not planning to study science um, at the university, you still want to be taking a science class or whichever other subject we're talking about. Yeah, I think these extra math and sciences help strengthen your skill set for the future classes that you'll be taking. You never know how they'll come back into play. I think it's always wise to keep taking all of those subjects. Well, I think that we've pretty much answered all of the questions that have come through, and we are always more than happy and willing to take any other questions that you might have if you reach out to us directly or come see us during your lunch. We're in the 800 building in the guidance office. We welcome you to come down here and talk to us. All of our counselors and myself, we are also, um, we are all in the guidance hall. And parents, we do have walk-ins every Thursday from 8.30 to from, um, excuse me, from 8 to 10.30. So no appointment is needed. You can come in um, anytime during that time frame, 8 to 10.30 to meet with your counselor. Please do note those dates, however, that we're doing registration meetings with our students during science classes because we won't be in our offices at that time. But otherwise, you are welcome to come in and meet with a counselor every Thursday from 8 to 1030 without an appointment. And so um, thank you all for being here this evening. We are so excited that we had so many participants and thank you for participating in our polls. Once again, remember that this presentation has been recorded, so you'll be able to access it on our YouTube channel as of this evening. Thank you all again and have a wonderful evening.